These game pads don't take it very easy. In fact, they go kind of hard. I guess it should be called hard SMX. We will be busting out the jack stands and coveralls in a future video, checking out the mechanic master over here or the X10. But today I want to focus on the X15 because it has this Starfield design, not quite as shameless as the Ione, which I reviewed recently, but it's clearly going for a Starfield-esque generic appearance. Furthermore than that, this controller, both of these for that matter, have been highly requested for a reason. They have a great quality control reputation. You you don't really hear many if set customers of easy smx not to mention the last few controllers they've released have been some real mick bangers with cheese fire up the grill and rotate the charcoal briquettes because we've got a review this is your controller captain we've reached 6900 feet go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles mm, you don't like back paddles how about those rear buttons we've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers and we're only at the beginning you need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller check out the controller playlist bing bong controller captain out quick disclaimer for my audience the stallions and stallionettes this controller was sent for review but this is going to be an honest comprehensive review i haven't been paid or told to say anything about it so if there's any con shortcomings or areas of improvement improvement, you're going to hear about it, so these companies make better products over time. As for the packaging included accessories on the $40 X15 model, you do have this very short, and I do mean a real short, 6 inch rubberized cable, not microfiber or braided, no dust covers, a little snip and throw on there, but it'll work for charging, and this is a wireless gamepad, so you don't really need to go wired with this thing. And since it's not a permanently affixed cable, you can use your own. Very simplistic outer box, if you wanted to pause to read some of the key features, a little pinch and zoom action, you may do so now. Little instruction manual pamphlet brochure which isn't terrible there's no color but there is these picture diagrams decent font english is the primary language actually pretty beneficial then you have your 2.4 gigahertz dongle or receiver which does have a dust cover and a pairing or sync button if you do come disconnected oh wow that is also very tactile and clicky mm, this actually feels like a very high quality dongle for a for a $40 controller. That was probably pretty loud. How was the noise rejection from the back of the mic? Before I get to ripping and rolling on the cosmetics over there at the wall, I want to talk about what Easy SMX is clear as day trying to do over here, which is going to be Starfield, obviously. So this is a really sick little glamour shot of three Starfield themed controllers. You have the licensed Microsoft joint, which is currently $140 on Amazon, but I locked her in for uh, almost half that, $80 when it was released. Pretty goddamn sexy looking. One of my favorites. Clear trick. Love that. Then you've got the tiny hiney, but I'm still going to bite Iney over here, which uh, is a fun one. Might get taken off the market. Might not. It's a Chinese gamepad. And then you've got the Easy SMX X15. Mm. As for the cosmetics or appearance, I've got to say this thing looks pretty hot to trot. Unlike the Iney, which had this kind of eggshell, warm vanilla white, this is actually bleached bright white, proper white. Although the face buttons are not. So I don't know if they're purposely going for this dark gray, but it actually looks super funky because you have a dark gray for the accessory buttons and then kind of an in-between you know 50 shades of gray over here with this logo so you've got a little bit of color clashing here you can see this little center section or chin and that just doesn't look too appealing also the sticker just screams parts been special back here this gamer's choice you know flexing about an award they've received you don't you don't need to put that back there but you do of course need this regulatory information however it doesn't need to be that large and it can also be color coded to match the controller black or gray the biggest problem here is that this is going through a clear identity crisis because it doesn't know if it wants to be a knockoff Starfield controller, but they also don't want to get sued. Or maybe they're just loosely going for that theme with the bronze and red in there. No, nope, it's got that retro stripe in there, which we all know with that, that it's Starfield. But everything about this controller clashes in a not smooth manner. I'm going to go ahead and give the cosmetics or appearance a three out of ten. Three out of the 10. As for ergonomics or comfort, this is way more comfortable than the Why Me I Knee that I just reviewed here recently because this is virtually identical shape and shell design, dimensions that is, to an Xbox One or Series controller. And that's a good thing. Those are some of the most comfortable controllers in the world. Now there is a little bit of aggressive stippling back here, more so than a standard Xbox controller. Oh yeah, scrapey. And since these two rear buttons are sunk flush with the rear shell, they don't cut negatively into comfort at all. This is a damn comfortable gamepad. I'm gonna go ahead and give it an eight out of 10. The quality of my build is unmatched because it's virtually identical to the Easy SMX, which for the price point is incredibly solid. And like I mentioned earlier, there's a very good QC quality control reputation around these game pads where they tend to just blast, which is very interesting to me. They feel almost identical to PDP's controllers from about four or five years ago, which isn't a bad thing by any means. They were my go-to recommendation for budget or entry level PC and Xbox controllers for the longest time. This feels almost identical, at least up here with the bumpers and triggers. They feel like a direct part swap from those. And while this is a light game pad, it does 
doesn't really feel cheap. The plastics you use feel quite nice and there is four Phillips or cross tips in the back if you do need to do a tear down or disassembly to fix anything. I'm gonna go ahead and give the build quality eight out of 10. For the price point, I should probably caveat that. If this was like a $300 gamepad, it'd probably be like a, like a seven out of 10. As for a warranty, Easy SMX products, which includes their headsets and controllers, do enjoy a one year warranty, a standardized North American warranty. But what is not covered is lost or stolen products, proof of purchase, you don't have a receipt for that bad boy. If you're a single minute over your warranty period, or you got your controller repaired through a buddy or a company, third party, or damage from any outside sources, you've dropped it, it's it's taken hailstones to the faceplate, anything like that. Falls, fails, slips, trips, and you know, bad things for your controller. As for the D-pad or direction buttons, it might be the most miserable, uncomfortable, shitty thing I've ever felt in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge, drastic exaggeration, but let me take you in a little bit closer to show you this funky, funkified mess. Switching to my macro lens, you can see what a Mac ho this D-pad is. Problem is it feels completely disconnected from the entire controller as it sinks in with the most squishy, mushy membrane feeling I have ever felt in my life. There's no positive actuation as to which direction you're hitting. It is virtually silent, that's a plus. And the surface plastics don't feel terrible. They do look pretty goddamn cheap, but the overall feel and the lack of positive actuation is just, look at this, check this out. And there's also an atrocious gap, which I'm sure will collect dust and skin follicles, maybe some Cheeto dust if you're one of those snackers. Yeah, this is just a fucking horrendous D-pad. Two out of 10, please. As for the face or action buttons, they're not a whole hell of a lot better. You would think that this print, this text, this font is just kind of inlaid or printed on there, but it's it, it's not. It's actually raised. You, you, oh, there you go. Yeah, hell yeah. Macro lens for the win, baby. Actually, it's not raised. The lettering is indented or in the buttons. Let's get my hand out of the shot. It's dry as shit. It's like I've got basilisk skin or snake scales or something. Anyway, I assure you that I'm a human being and I assure you that these face or action buttons don't feel very good as the camera bounces around about a millimeter to actuate. Not obnoxiously loud either. The plastics do feel pretty cheap on your fingers. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a four out of 10. As for the accessory button suite, I'm hiding my gnarled hand because I still haven't lotioned it. You have the plus minus easy SMX button, which is of course gonna work as a home button and then turbo and this little extra glory hole button down here, which indeed is for additional functionality such as macro, rebinding the rear buttons, controlling the vibration and lighting. And you can of course control all that on the fly from the board. I've got a couple of big old fat complaints. First of all, is gonna be size and shape with these bad boys. And these are a completely different mechanism. Yeah, a lot of resistance there. And then down here, these sound completely different. Oh my God, also a ton of side to side player wiggle. Feel really cheap plastics wise. No complaints with this bad boy, the home button. He feels nice. You know, schwacking that stallion button up there feels just, just correct, feels just right. Uh, wrong, definitely wrong. This whole accessory button sweet, it just isn't that sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four out of 10. And along those lines, there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which falls in line with the accessory buttons. Stop whatever it is you're doing. Making some weird hisses and noises over there. Don't explode on me. As for these analog sticks, these joysticks, they do have anti-friction rings around the outside of the thumbstick bases, but they're pretty rough and scratchy, and that's because they're actually RGB lighting, which you can dim, disable, control, all that other good stuff, but they don't feel very fucking good at all. The thumbstick caps and bases, basically the entire thumbstick plastic part that slides onto the modules is from an Xbox One or Series controller. If you played with a stock Xbox controller, you felt this rubber or silicone compound. Clicking down the modules does not sound or feel terrible, and they are Hall Effect thumbstick modules that are virtually stick drift proof. We are gonna test them at the PC. Mm -hmm. Over here in Gamepad Tester, we are recognizing as an Xbox controller, and what I'm seeing is a perfect resting value for potentiometer thumbstick, mo thumbstick modules at 0 0.00002. Another good one that we see is 0 0.00392. I do have a gamepad tester tutorial linked in the description below. It actually is a short video, believe it or not. I do put those out. It's only about three minutes and 50 seconds long, I do believe. Mm, good to see. Unlike that controller we tested the other day, just about a week ago, there is no weird inner dead zone baked in, so it doesn't jump from here to here. You can actually feather for those finite movements also. You do get to the outside of the thumbstick gate, so no weird outer dead zone. How about the circularity test, shall we? Yep, literally looking like potentiometer thumbstick modules, which are usually between 10 and 16% on the average error rate. Nothing to nothing to see here. Move along. Move along. Move along. 
bumper cars bumping people off and the bumpers on the X15. They are okay, but they are identical to the PDP and Power A, Xbox and PC entry wired controllers, which isn't great. The triggers do have a little bit of stippling, which doesn't do much in the means of grips, but that does not exist over here on the bumpers whatsoever. Also, the mix match grays with the plastics is not cosmetically pleasing. Also, I hate this outer frame that makes you have to have a USB-C cable that isn't very thick. Bumpers are quiet and easy to actuate with the meat or tip of your index finger, and that's what's most important here. I'm going to go ahead and give them a 6 out of 10. They're completely serviceable. As for these triggers, they have a nice resistance. Not much travel. They feel like a little bit less or so than a stock Xbox controller. So if you're a racing game player, you might want to keep that in mind. Mm, they do feel pretty goddamn good, though. They do not have any trigger lock or stop systems. So you're getting that full squeeze the entire time. And you do have that little bit of stippling up there, which doesn't do much in the means of grip whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and give them a 6 out of 10. You know what? Instead of strutting my stuff in front of the camera like a sultry salute, I'm going to go ahead and just show you the instruction manual where it talks about the rebinding phase for the rear buttons, which of course does have macro support. So if you want to set up a string of actions with one button press, you can do that. Me, myself, I always just set one button binding to each rear button, usually a face or action button. And this is how you're going to do that. Bind the M1 and 2 buttons. Also fun little typo in there. Controller enter programming mode. These rear buttons, I feel like I've talked about them before. Maybe it was in this video or this video or maybe this one. Point is, this is a very common rear button design and a pretty damn good one. The plastics used back here do not feel great. No dots are stippling, no rubberized coating, but they're not obnoxiously loud and they are easy to actuate and also ergonomically comfortable where you want to naturally hold the controller. You have your middle finger covering the rear buttons or M1 and 2 as they're called here, and they're totally serviceable. Also don't cut into comfort because they are flush with the rear shell. I'm going to go ahead and give them a 6 out of 10. As for battery life, it is incredibly impressive as there is a 1000 milliamp hour battery on board, which isn't, you know, out of the ordinary, but it does get an advertised 20 hours of battery life, which I was getting around 18, which is still pretty good. Although there is no fast charging as it would take about three hours to get me back up to 100%. Getting our first input lag or delay test in Gamepad LA. We are of course going to do X input test as well. Wow, that is receiving those samples pretty quickly. And that is because we are at one millisecond of input lag or delay right out of the box. That is a huge pro or benefit with this controller. Camera switch. I don't know why I said it verbally. I also hit, hit the button for it too on the old old stream deck, not to be confused with steam deck, stupid naming convention on the both of them. Very consistent here is minimum and maximum, not very far from each other. Jitter, low. We like to see that. Polling rate, 1000 hertz. Don't let it confuse you that there it doesn't say a thousand here. It's because we have one major outlier, which is going to be a large number at the top. It doesn't agree with the rest of its comrades. I lied. It's not at the top. It's going to be right there, which means it could have been operator error. Maybe I got a little bit lazy spinning the sticks. Let's run another one, shall we? Wow. Same outlier in the same place. A little bit smaller that time though. Whew. Yeah, indeed, 1000 hertz on the stock polling rate. Jesus creepers, which is a good thing because I was unable to get any faster speeds by overclocking in the Lord of Mice 1000 hertz right out of the box. That's kind of what we're trying to get to with the overclocks. The job's already done for you. Don't reinvent the wheel, so to speak. So a quick note with the dongle, I had came unpaired or unhinged, if you will. All you got to do is plug it into your PC or console, press the button on it. Don't hold it down. Just press it. It'll get a flashing green button on the dongle. And then you do need to press and hold down, hold down for three seconds the home button button on the controller and it will repair. Having said that, the dongle might not be the thing to use considering we are all over the place. It's bouncing between 5 and 10 milliseconds of input lag or delay, also taking a long time to complete this test. My wrist is getting fatigued. I'm getting tired as shit. There we go. And our average is at 7 milliseconds of input lag or delay on 150 hertz stock clock. Let's see what X input test has to say on the situation, shall we? So some weird stutters or sputters in there. Yep, those those major outliers in there. Big ones. I mean, 19 milliseconds. Those are those are big spikes. Yes, as you can see, minimum 0.6. That's very low. But then we have these spikes, which jump up to almost 20 milliseconds. Jitter, that's very high. I mean, six and eight milliseconds of input lag or delay when using that dongle. And it is not susceptible to being overclocked. Neither, neither or nor. Pairing via or via Bluetooth, however you want to say the word, go ahead and turn the controller off. It's on right now. That's a problem. Now we're gonna hold down the home button and B. Whoa, it's gonna freak out. That means it's in Bluetooth pairing mode. I'm gonna quickly, before it comes out of Bluetooth pairing mode, gotta be quick on the draw around here. Add a device, Bluetooth. And you gotta be quick about it. The controller is no longer in pairing mode. So I gotta uh, uh, I gotta do that again. Come on, you son of a bitch. You ain't gonna make me look like a sucker today. Come on. So unfortunately, I've tried all four modes of connectivity, holding down the home button and each one of the face buttons, and I am unsuccessful on pairing via Bluetooth at this time. I'll update you later via a written post and or a vertical short 
short form video if I get it up and running. I did want to test the Bluetooth speeds though, so I'm going to keep trying here. As for converter or adapter support, you can use the Brick Accessories XB2 on the Xbox Series S and X consoles, unrestricted, full access, and you can use the dongle or you can use the Bluetooth connection by holding down the home button and B. There is a separate Bluetooth connection for Android devices by holding down home and A, but that did not work for connecting. So you do have two modes of connectivity for the Xbox. As for the PlayStation side of the house, I couldn't get the dongle to work at all, but I could get connectivity by holding down home and B, throwing it into that Bluetooth connectivity mode. And you of course have that restriction only being able to play PS4 games. Over here on the Easy SMX website, oop, got a little pop-up. No, I will not subscribe and get railed with email marketing. Thank you very much. This is the controller we're reviewing here today. How convenient is that? Right there on the banner. $40 joint right here. The next controller we're reviewing is the mechanic over here. Get your wrenches and sockets ready. And that's an extra $10. So there's probably an additional $10 of features packed into that plastic princess. Easy SMX is also known for their snap and clip, the M10. Although, <laughs> come on now, with the G8 Galileo from GameSir, it's hard to even glance over the shoulder at any other snap and clip. I've reviewed the ad. I, I, man, I've had that controller for so long. It's still sitting around here in a drawer somewhere. Still works. I just, man, bringing back memories. I've gotten a lot of stick time with this model right here. And I think it was this one right here, which is like the same controller with a different faceplate, basically different cosmetics. No experience with anything down here though. These old Johns. You got your new Johns, your old Johns, and your little Johns. And Easy SMX, of course, does also make headsets, which I have not reviewed any of their cans or earbuds. It says PlayStation controller, but I'm sure it's PlayStation 3 or 4 or something. Yep. PS3. Called it. Nailed it, railed it, and didn't fail it. I don't know. Let's get out of here. I'm, I'm done. So as for the pros, cons, and verdict, I'm going to go ahead and start with the cons, shortcomings, limitations, areas of improvement with this controller. Got a lot of dead skin follicles or flakes on the left thumbstick doing the delay test. There is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. That hasn't mattered to me on a controller in a long time, but it matters to some. It's not here. The accessory button suite is not very sweet. Like I mentioned, different buttons, squishy up here, clicky down here. Home button's okay though, no, but these other ones are silly. The D-pad is the worst in its class and it's just terrible. <laughs> Bumpers and triggers taken directly from PDP and Power A controllers. Performance with the dongle was not phenomenal. It was a little bit slower than I'd like. It wasn't terribles around seven or eight milliseconds, but much faster going wired at one millisecond. Onto the pros, battery life, pretty goddamn good. Advertised 20, IRL, about 18. I wish there was fast charging, but it takes you about three hours to get back up to charge. The rear buttons, I wish there was two more of them, but the fact that there's two back here and they are functional and can be bound on the fly, single press or macro, it's nice. A thousand hertz pulling rate, stock pulling rate. Y yeah, sign me up for that all day, especially in a $40 gamepad, love that. All effect modules that are virtually stick drift proof and also performed really good in gamepad tester and gameplay, of course. And last but not least, you have a solid quality control reputation from Easy SMX. I haven't heard no complaints, no people popping out of the woodworks on Reddit and forums and the comment section of my videos. Because I've reviewed a couple Easy SMX controllers in the past, a couple years ago. And I do revisit past reviews, look at the comment section. I don't always reply to all of them because there's a shitload of comments, but I do read them. And if there's any questions that are addressed directly to me or something that's not not just, you know, I like pineapples or something like that. If you know, it's a question about the controller, I'm of course going to address it. Anyway, I haven't heard any horror stories or folk tales of these things disintegrating in people's hands because they're made out of paper mache. So that's, that's great. This is linked in the description below. If you want to check it out, drop in the comment section below. Would you stallions use one of these controllers from Easy SMX? Have you tried them in the past? Would you try them in the future? Are you going to try them now? And more importantly than all that, the Fallout TV series is dropping today. All the episodes on Amazon Prime, really fucking excited for that. IGN just dropped a review. They gave it a nine. Spoiler alert. I don't know what that means to any of us. So, you know, uh, how much weight we really put in IGN reviews, but, um, you know, uh, I'm excited for the TV show. I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So mollywop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun to tomorrow.